हेलो क्लास टुडे वी आर गोइंग टू डू पार्ट टू ऑफ एलियट्स द लव सॉन्ग ऑफ जे अल्फ्रेड फ्रॉक इन दी पार्ट वन आई गेव यू द ब्रीफ समरी ऑफ द पोयम अ ब्रीफ इंट्रोडक्शन एंड एनालिसिस ऑफ द पोयम एंड बायो ऑफ टी एस एलियट नाउ हेयर वी आर गोइंग टू कवर द पोयम लाइन बाय लाइन so the love song of j alfred prufrock is a monologue what is a dramatic monologue a dramatic monologue is a type of uh, storytelling in which a character in a poem or drama or any other literary narrative is uh, assumes to be talking to be someone but in fact he is not talking to anyone he is talking to his alter ego or to himself a narrator is assumed in a dramatic monologue but a um, narrator uh, but a, nis- a listener is assumed in a dramatic monologue but a listener is never present just the uh, main uh, character is talking so here proof rock is involved in a dramatic monologue with himself it is a monologue Uh, it appears as if someone is there or a woman is there to whom he is singing his love song or telling about his life but no one is present he is just talking to himself everything uh, the entire poem is in his head so the poem starts with an epigraph and this epigraph is taken from dante's inferno so the quotation of uh, the epigraph is taken from dante's inferno canto 27 and this section is where in which dante encounters a character in hell called guido and both dante and guido confess to each other about their experiences in their individual lives dante confesses to guido about his experiences in italy and guido confesses to dante about his experiences in hell so this uh, section is introduced by eliot to set the tone of the poem the confessional tone the poem is confessional in nature prufro confesses about his life so uh, this epigraph sets the tone of confession for the poem because this monologue it, it is related with the confession of prufro now let's begin with the poem let us go then you and i when the evening is spread out against the sky like a patient etherized upon a table let us go through certain half deserted streets the muttering retreats of restless nights in one night cheap hotels and sordid restaurants with oyster shells streets that follow like a tedious argument of insidious intent to lead you to an overwhelming question oh do not ask what is it let us go and made our visit in the room the women come and go talking of michael angelo so uh, the poem starts with the suggestion of a monologue like let us go then you and i so who is you you is no one you is alter ego of prufrock himself because it is a monologue so uh, here it is assumed that you is a woman but no no woman is present here to talk to prufrock because he is a very secluded character in city life so this these lines they set up the setting of the poem and uh, eliot says when the evening is spread out against the sky like a patient etherized upon a table so this line a patient etherized upon a table it has objective correlative because what is ether ether was earlier used in 18th and 19th centuries and early 20th centuries for um, uh, in order to uh, it was used as a drug for operations or surgical pro- procedures it was used as a general anesthetic so evening is described as lazy or uh or spread like a etherized patient on a table like an uh, anesthetic anesthetized or etherized patient upon a table so uh, what is objective correlative objective correlative is a literary device in which an a non living thing is uh, shown as taking over the feeling of a living thing so it is like 
द होल एटमोसफेयर इज इन सिंक विद द लेजीनेस ऑफ प्रोफ्रॉक्स माइन हेयर द इथिराइज पेशेंट में ऑल्सो भी सिम्बलिक ऑफ द ऑफ द डल एंड लेजी एंड अनमोटिवेटिव माइंडसेट ऑफ प्रोफ्रॉक बिकॉज ही डज नॉट ही डज नॉट हैव करेज टू प्रपोज टू द लेडी ऑफ हिज इंटरेस्ट सो हिज माइंड हिज माइंड इज ऑल्सो इथिराइज हिज माइंड इज ऑल्सो पैरालाइज ही डज नॉट हैव द एनकरेजमेंट और और ही इज नॉट एक्टिव इनफ टू अप्रोच द वूमन सो हेयर वी हैव दैट वी सी दैट इलियट इज इलियट इज गिविंग अ रिफरेंस टू द नॉट ओनली हिज इंटरनल स्टेट ऑफ माइंड बट ऑल्सो द एक्सटर्नल एटमोसफेयर ऑफ द सिटी द सिटी हेयर दैट इज रिफर टू probably may be st louis where eliot grew up or it may be london because because uh, eliot recently moved to london uh, uh, during the course of writing this poem let us go through certain half deserted streets so the streets are half deserted there are no people uh, there are not much people to talk to on the streets the streets are like deserted people are not interested in being in social life or uh, in uh, or uh, or communicating with each other the muttering retreats of restless nights the nights are restless people are not uh, having peace of mind because cities uh, in cities you see people waking up 24 by 7 there is no uh, natural routine so the nights are restless and here uh, 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 Eliot is also uh, setting a tone for the condition of the city that he is describing. The condition of the city is restless and also full of squalor uh, and cheap people. It is a cheap city that he is describing. So he is describing one night cheap hotels. One night cheap hotels is a reference to the uh, um, to the uh, uh, low quality life of people like. Uh, and they are one night cheap hotels and sawdust restaurants with oyster shells the restaurants are described as sawdust restaurants the restaurants are dirty they are full of uh, dust with oyster shells streets that follow like a tedious argument of insidious intent so here insidious intent describes the insecurity of the poet in a city in which he is alone he is not feeling safe in the urban atmosphere to lead you to an overwhelming question what is the overwhelming question overwhelming question is oh do not ask what is it so here overwhelming question is the question like whether you will be my partner the uh, he, proof rock here is hesitant to ask the lady whether you will be my partner or whether you will be my uh, love interest so here uh, we see uh, uh, he is not courageous enough or brave enough because he feels insecure in the urban atmosphere to show his feelings to someone let us go and made our visit so here we see proof rock tries to confess his love but he avoids the question and then diverts his attention to other things in the room the women come and go talking of michael angelo so this phrase is uh, this these uh, two lines are repeated again and again in the poem and this is a reference to the high class upper class women because they are talking about michael angelo because uh, uh, lower class people do not even know michael angelo so upper class people only know michael angelo the famous italian painter michael angelo was a famous italian painter uh he was born in 1475 and he died in 1564 so he was famous for his uh, uh paintings and his and the artifacts he made he was also a very famous sculptor so these are sophisticated women and they they talk about art aesthetics literature so prufrock is very uh, very uh, timid he does not have courage to approach these upper class women whether he will be accepted in such an aesthetic society or not and women come and go like women are fickle minded they are restless they do not sit at one place 
to give attention to proof rock and also women come and go is also a reference to the life of uh, proof rock because his life is also full of women who come and go he does not have a stable partner in his life next senza the yellow fog that rubs its back upon the window panes the yellow smoke that rubs its muzzle on the window panes licked its tongue into the course of the evening lingered upon the pools that stand in drains let fall upon its back the soot that falls from chimneys slipped by the terrace made a sudden leap and seeing that it was a soft october night curled once about the house and fell asleep in this stanza we have a comparison between the yellow fog and ye yellow smoke to the to a lazy cat so the movement of the fog and smoke in the city is compared to the movement of a cat in the city like a lazy cat and the reference to the fog and smoke is also a reference to the uh, pollution of the city so the yellow fog that rubs its back upon the window panes the yellow smoke that rubs its muzzle on the window panes so the yellow fog and yellow smoke is rubbing its uh, rub, rubbing on the window panes of the houses just like a cat rubs its muzzle or back on the window panes licked its tongue into the corners of the evening lingered up lingered upon the pools that stand in drains let fall upon its back the soot that falls from chimneys the soot that falls from chimneys is is an is a another reference to the uh, polluted atmosphere of the city the city is full of soot blackishness the air is not clean the atmosphere and the sky is not clean the yellow fog yellow smoke and soot is all around slipped by the terrace made a sudden leap and seeing that it was a soft october night so what is the time when proof rock is uh, meditating upon all these elements in his life it is october night it is a time of night it is a cold night curled once about the house and fell asleep so the laziness of the fog and the laziness that is described to the cat is also a reference to the laziness of proof rock's indecisive mind he, he the moment of his mind or the moment of his self toward proposing a woman is as similar to a lazy cat next stanza and indeed there will be time for the yellow smoke that slides along the street rubbing its back upon the window panes there will be time there will be time to prepare a face to meet the faces that you meet there will be time to mutter and create and time for all the works and days of hands that lift and drop a question on your plate time for you and time for me and time for a hundred indecisions and for a hundred visions and revisions before the taking of a toast and tea in the room the women come and go talking of michael angelo in this stanza eliot is talking a lot about time and here uh, we see and the proof rock is saying there will be time and this is repeated again and again throughout the stanza so it sh it shows the indecisive nature of proof rock's mind and he is so uh, so lazy uh, uh, proof rock is continuously procrastinating all his decisions to approach the women and he says there will be time but this is uh, here we see the echo of andrew marvels famous poem to his coy mistress because we see uh, that he uh, eliot was very much influenced by the metaphysical conceit of the meta uh, metaphysical poets and here we see in the uh, poem to his coy mistress marvel says that uh, there is not uh, so much time in the world marvel the character in the poem is saying to the beloved that we should make good use of the time we have and we should not let the time go waste in shying or coying we should confess our love to each other but here uh, proof rock is an anti uh, it is he's he's very um, Uh, very much against uh, catching the uh, time he says there will be time so he is so demotivated and indecisive and uh, he accepts his isolation he accepts that he is not ready 
he accepts that he needs to improve upon himself and then only he can be a part of this society he cannot be a part of the evenings of this upper class women until and unless he prepare himself so he describes there will be time there will be time to prepare a face to meet the faces that you meet so he he considers himself inadequate enough or not presentable enough to meet these women now he he needs to prepare a face then only he can meet them he is not fashionable or good looking enough to meet these upper class women there will be time to murder and create he needs to murder a personality and create a new one and time for all the works and days of hands they lift and drop a question on your plate so he will be only a part of their uh, evenings and, and he will only be able, uh, able to dine with them uh, or share a plate with them uh, when he makes him uh, of their level like fashionable enough or uh, having a taste of literature or aesthetics he considers himself inadequate for the upper class urban atmosphere in which these women are living time for you and time for me and time yet for a hundred indecisions so this uh, uh, this shows that uh, prufrock's mind is filled with hundred indecisions that he needs to solve and for a hundred visions and revisions he, so he keeps on visiting revisiting his thoughts again and again he does not make up his mind before the taking of a toast and a tea so uh, toast and a tea uh, toast and tea is again symbolic of modern british evening upper class modern uh, british society so he can only have a toast and tea with these upper class people before he makes him himself presentable or uh, good in the uh, manners or taste of the urban uh, upper class atmosphere and in the room women come and go talking of michael angelo so here uh, talking of michael angelo uh, instills a fear in the mind of uh, prufro because he is thinks that if they are talking about michael angelo they discuss everything about what is going in society and they will also discuss about his ugliness so uh, this is also the reason that he does not approach the woman because he thinks that he will be discussed because these upper class women discuss everything a lot and they discuss uh, society they discuss literature uh, they discuss uh, every aspect they are, these women are critical of society so uh this is also the reason that uh, uh, prufrock is not brave enough to face women because he is afraid of rejection and uh, uh, or, or becoming a topic of discussion among these women next stanza and indeed there will be time to wonder do i dare and do i dare time to turn back and descend the stair with a bald spot in the middle of my hair they will say how his hair is growing thin my morning coat my collar mounting firmly to the chin my neck tie rich and modest but asserted by a simple pin they will say but how his arms and legs are thin do i dare disturb the universe in a minute there is time for decisions and revisions which a minute will reverse so in this stanza we see that uh, Uh, prufrock shows his uh, timid nature he is very timid he says do i dare do i dare he questions himself whether he has the courage to face the women or not time to turn back and descend the stair he feels like running away from the room he wants to run away from the uh, this uh, the the meeting of this upper class women with a bald spot in the middle of my hair so prufrock is very Uh, insecure about his uh, old age he is a middle aged man with a bald spot in the middle of his hair and he is aging and not so attractive or handsome so he feels like running away from that place they will say how his hair is growing thin he is very considerate of the fact that he will be ridiculed they will discuss about him discuss about his ugliness and old age my morning coat my collar mounting firmly to my chin my neck tie rich and modest but asserted by a simple pin 
सो हिज अपियरेंस इज़ वेरी सिंपलिस्टिक ही इज़ नॉट सो मच डेंडी इन अपियरेंस ही इज़ नॉट सो फैशनेबल इन अपियरेंस दे विल से हाउ हिज आर्म्स आर लेग इन थिन सो ही मेक्स ऑल दीज कन्वर्सेशन इन हिज हैड ही इज़ टॉकिंग टू हिमसेल्फ ही इज़ हैविंग अ मोनोलॉग डेट दीज वीमेन इफ ही अप्रोच Uh, these women and becomes himself a target of makes himself a target of ridicule his whole appearance will be discussed his body his fashion that how he is thin he is not handsome so do i dare disturb the universe so he feels uh, not courageous enough to uh, tackle these or face these women universe is symbolic of the whole room that is filled with upper class women so he does not have the courage Uh, to reach uh, these women and talk to them he feels like he will disturb the uh, conversation of these women the calmness of these women and he will become the target of their discussion in a minute there is time for decisions and revisions which are minute will reverse so he is again and again procrastinating and thinking whether i should do this or not whether i should approach these women or not in a minute i will approach i will approach these women but, but as time passes he is still in the same mental state for i have known them all already known them all have known the evenings mornings afternoons i have measured out my line with coffee spoons my life with coffee spoons i know the voices dying with a dying fall beneath the music from a father room so how should i presume and i have known the eyes already known them all the eyes that fix you in a formulated phrase and when i am formulated sprawling on a pin when i am pined and wriggling or wriggling on the wall then how should i begin to spit out all the but ends of my days and ways and how should i presume so in these two stanzas prufrock is describing all the knowledge he had throughout his life he has lived most of his life he is soon going to enter into old age he is on the uh, brink of uh, um, age of uh, middle age and he describes all kind of city manners urban class manners he has experienced in his life and he has had a knowledge of the upper class people their ways their manners how the society upper class society operates and he uh, describes himself against these against this upper class culture i have known them all already known them all have known the evenings mornings and afternoons he knows how these upper class be people behave in evenings mornings and afternoons their routine and i have measured out my life with coffee spoons and this line describes that Uh, prufrock has not done any majorly significant thing is in his life he has just participated in these uh, evening teas and he has uh, drank uh, he has drunk uh, coffee with these people he and he he has not done uh, he has done some insignificant chatter with these upper class people but he had not done something meaningful i know the voices dying with a dying fall beneath the music from a farther room so he describes all the music all the uh, cutlery of these parties the toast and the teas so he knows what uh, what kind of mentality these upper class people have and how they judge people so how should i presume so he uh, he he's indecisive that how should i start how should i get the courage to approach the woman i have known the eyes already known them all he is talking about women here what kind of observation these upper class women have they observe you from head to toe the eyes that fix you in a formulated phrase so these upper class women they fix you they like pin you like a insect pin to a wall and when i formulated sprawling on a pin when i am pined and wriggling on the wall so here prufrock describes his condition like a insect who is pinned on the wall who is made the target of discussion and ridicule in this among these upper class women so he is scared of being a target of discussion and a target of ridicule then how should i begin to spit out the but ends of my days and ways so he is also very insecure and he is also very desperate because he knows the but ends of his days are going like the but end is the end of a cigarette so his whole life has been uh, 
कंज्यूम्ड लाइक अ सिगरेट एंड यस द बट एंड इज लेफ्ट सो ही वॉन्ट्स वॉन्ट्स टू कन्फेस इज लव टू अ लेडी ही वॉन्ट्स अ पार्टनर बिसाइड हिम द बट एंड्स ऑफ हिज लाइफ आर लेफ्ट एंड ही हैज ओनली द मैनर्स ही हैज लर्न थ्रू आउट हिज लाइफ it it is not uh, uh, the middle age is not also a age to change your life completely and to become an entirely new person he just has all the manners that he has learned throughout his life to offer and how should i presume how should i begin he is indecisive and i have known the arms already known them all arms that are braceleted and white and bare but in the lamp light down with light brown hair is it perfume from a dress that makes me so digress arms that lie along a table or wrap about a shawl and should i then presume and how should i begin shall i say i have gone at dusk through narrow streets and watched the smoke that rises from the pipes o oh, lonely man in shirt sleeves leaning out of windows i should have been a pair of ragged claws scuttling across the floors of silent seas so here uh, prufrock brings up an element of sensuousness he describes the sensual appeal the fashion of these upper class ladies he describes i have known the arms already known them all like he he has been a part of their circle upper class women arms that are braceleted reference to their jewelry and white and bare but in the lamp light down with light brown hair is it perfume from a dress that makes me so digress so all this reference to perfume bracelet dress all these reference are the uh, uh, references to the fashion of the upper class lady and how uh, he will be judged by them because they are so fashionable and so reputed and so learned but he is middle aged he is not handsome and he does not have enough knowledge about art and aesthetics arms that lie along a table or wrap about a shawl so they are so uh, comfortable and cloistered in their atmosphere these women they are comfortable in their shawl they are uh, having their discussion peacefully so he does not want to be a target and disturb their communication how should i then presume how should i begin so prufrock is confused at how should i begin how should i face them i do not have courage to face these uh, fashionable women who are having their peaceful conversation because then he will disturb their conversation and, and he, he will become the topic of discussion Uh, shall i say i have gone at dusk through narrow streets and watched the smoke that rises from the pipes of lonely men in shirt sleeves leaning out of windows so here he is describing about lonely men that he has witnessed uh, leaning out of windows in evening so he does not want to end up like them he has seen uh, men who are lonely in their middle age they have no one to talk to they are depressed they just lean out of their windows in order to find someone to talk to or to just look at someone to look at a human presence so his discerning is future that he may end up like these lonely men just smoking pipe leaning out of window and he does not want to be one of them but he may end up like them he if he does not propose to a woman or if he does not become noticeable i should have been a pair of ragged claws scuttling across the floors of silent seas it is a very important uh, couplet this these lines are often uh, asked uh, in exams to explain so here uh, it it has these lines have many meanings i should have been a pair of ragged claws ragged claws claws is a reference to the crabs in the seas because in seas the crabs live in the lowest section of ocean like ocean is a universe in itself like the universe of ours so he describes that he should he he should have been a crab because crabs live alone on the bottom part of the ocean in the lowest part of the ocean and they are not not noticeable they just they are just by themselves they do not swim on the surface scuttling across the floors of silent seas so he his life is similar to these crabs he is alone he is not noticeable and he considers himself neglected worthless low and not useful and and he is invisible like 
a creature de- uh, that is scut- scuttling across on the seabed like the crabs so these lines show that uh, how uh, how uh, proof rock sees himself in the face of these upper class women he sees himself as a worthless neglected alone creature who is at the lowest uh, section of the society he does not have the thus he does not he considers himself lowly thus he does not have the courage to approach these women so i will stop here and uh, this is part 2 of the poem elliot's poem the love song of j alfred prufrock and in the next lecture we will cover this poem in the part 3 thank you